Hey, welcome everyone. While we're definitely in the post-pandemic era, which, you know, personally, I'm really excited to see. Um, I, uh, I tend to operate very face-to-face -face and collaborative, and so the number of people seeing at the conference, the number of people here today, it's, uh, it's great and it's exciting. Hopefully you all got to take in a lot of the keynotes, um, a lot of great speakers, a lot of great content. Um, I think from my talk, you'll see some of those same themes and hopefully uh, pick up a few tidbits along the way. Um, my topic today, Gen AI, Industry and Infrastructure Leap. Um, and uh, I picked the picture with the Roman Coliseum and Wembley Stadium to try to draw a stark contrast to maybe where we were, where we are, and the change we need to make going forward. By the way, I'm Tom Garvins. I head up all of Google's hardware infrastructure that we use that powers a lot of the apps that likely you're familiar with in terms of YouTube and ads and search, as well as all of the infrastructure that we use that we make available as infrastructure as a service through our cloud business. So um, some of the themes I wanna talk about through my presentation and for you to walk away with, um, we're in a new era of computing, and, uh, and I'm using the term AI first to drive home a point, because I think for the last few decades, we've been in a world of general purpose compute first. And general purpose compute isn't going away, but AI and the blueprint we need to design for that is at the same tier and priority level and they need to be thought of at the same tier. This isn't acceleration on the side. This is a primary compute vehicle for a lot of the infrastructure and the inflection point that we're going through. And by the way, for the same you know, way we dealt with general purpose compute and VM farms before, we're talking floor scale focus for AIML. We're talking about hundreds of acres of footprint that's rolling out this technology. And so it needs that same type of deliberate thought that general purpose compute has come through over the last few decades. Um, AI infrastructure, you know, it's a capacity race. You know, I'll say this there, you know, I'll talk about it on the coming slides, is the CSPs play a very critical role. Um, there probably aren't a lot of enterprise companies out there placing, you know, $10 billion POs for their own large language model infrastructure. Those customers are coming to the CSPs. And if you're a technology provider, being friendly so CSPs can deploy your, your um, technology and equipment, it's critical for you to participate in this, in this space. Um, deliberate design for operational focus. Today, there's not a tremendous amount of standardization in this place. We're very much starting in our infancy, and when we're rolling out infrastructure at the 100 of acre level, how you roll it out, how you deploy it, how you maintain it, how you sustain it, how you can build it, very critical in terms of the designs. And then lastly, I'll talk a little bit about um, some of Google's learnings, um, the call to action on the challenges and how OCP can uh, help and contribute in this area. Um, probably nothing new on this slide, but AI everywhere. Um, you know, one person's opinion, I don't think that there's any industry or any vertical that can't get significant advantages from AI and ML. And I think the world is at its infancy in unlocking that. And part of that is making it easy to use. You know, I'll be very honest, at the beginning of this year, economy was kind of in its doldrums. I didn't know what was gonna turn things around. And you know, to say it, chat GPT and how it introduced AI ML to the masses, it lit a fire. It lit a fire under a lot of places, it lit a fire under the world and got focus on what AI ML and specifically what large language models can do out there. Cross industry, it's transforming existing businesses, it's generating new businesses that weren't enabled before, broad utility, and it's applicable globally. Um, some people call this the you know, next revolution, just like what the invention of electricity was or the invention of the smartphone. Um, I believe this will change the world forever going forward. And so it's important to think about where we're starting from and where we want to go. Um, demand for ML compute is exploding. You've probably seen a number of different charts like this. And uh, 
it's a linear curve, but you know, look at the y-axis, it's exponential growth. You talk about in the last five years, the number of parameters in large language models have gone from 100 million to 540 billion. And that is going to continue. And that will continue to continue. And the amount of compute, the amount of memory to store those models, and the deliberate interconnect that's needed to create cohesive fabric, um, very critical, very critical to be successful in this space. Um, so the compute, the memory, and the interconnect now, all equally as important in this space. Um, so a little bit about Google. We have an open and scalable AI infrastructure. This is not commodity today. Um, it's very specialized. The software is very much at its infancy today in terms of what it's doing. Um, but Google's been at it a while. And we'll talk about that in the coming slides. Um, we have multiple Google offerings today that we use for our internal engines for our applications as well as making available as infrastructure as a service. And uh, you know, for outside of Google, we offer that through our cloud model. It's simple, simple to operate, and you can know you're operating in a Google energy and green efficiency optimized data center when you participate with us in that cloud model. Tools and frameworks, common stack. You know, I'd, I'd like to think of uh, a lot of different offerings out there in terms of hardware engines in the AIML space. And I'd like to think the nirvana state we can get to is that, you know, we can use these utilities the same way we use appliances today and interswap a, a Duracell versus an Energizer battery. That's kind of an ideal end state. We're not there yet. We've got a long ways to go. But ideally, if we can get there, then this thing is really available for the masses. A um, little bit, you know, a few of the slides, um, our cloud TPUs that we've been under for a long time, the NVIDIA GPUs that we have in our portfolio, and then the mapping of what to use where. You know, I'll be honest, every technology has a sweet spot that it's good at, and uh, at Google, we want to make sure that all of those offerings are available to uh, our end users. So, you know, one of the things when we talk about this inflection point and what we're doing with AI ML, I'll be honest, Google has been at it almost a decade. It's a new inflection point for outside of the industry, but this is something that Google has been at for a long time that honestly I think has been one of their best kept secrets. We talk about liquid cooling. Google's been at that for a decade. We talk about low latency interconnects with optical. Google's been at that for a long time. And so stepping this up and continuing on this progress continues to be just natural for us. Um, you could see some of the generations we've been to in our latest offering that we just announced at uh, our next conference. Tens of thousands of chips, and think four terabytes of HBM. You know, the fastest memory that you can make available to compute from. Massive data set sizes that you can run in here. Now that said, we have these massive clusters. They can be sliced up into smaller pieces for smaller training jobs. They can be sliced up to be used for training. So it really just depends on what target you're going after and the scale you want to have. Um, on the GPU side, also our latest offering for our A3 VMs in our cloud product. Um, we're leveraging NVIDIA, once again, scaling tens of thousands of GPUs interconnected with our Jupyter Internet fabric. Once again, it's a footprint, so you can run very large models, but also can slice it up into things that are smaller for multi-use, multiple customers, different job sizes. Training, serving, scientific computing, which was really the first place in HPC where GPUs emerged from, and uh, they continue to find more uses as uh, time goes on. So complexity and challenges, and this is going to be some of what Google has learned, some of where the industry trends are today, and where focus needs to enhance from maybe where it's been. Um, as I mentioned, the infrastructure that we're rolling out for these large language models are not that dissimilar to where Exascale supercomputers have been for many years. But we're doing this at the hundred of acres footprint, not the hundreds of rows footprint. And so um, the scale is massive, and that makes you think about things differently. 
you know, one thing I can say about Google is that we kind of say we design chiller to chip. We design utility down to the battery. Is that the utility, the data center floor, what we're doing with the infrastructure inside the data center, what we're doing at the row level, what we're doing at the rack level, what we're doing at the tray level, what we're doing at the chip level, and what we're doing at the component level, and how that informs how the software should be optimized, that's Google's DNA. And that's really what the CSP brings in terms of co-optimizing all those things. You don't optimize at the tray if you're going to deploy at the uh, 100 of acre foot level. You have to optimize all of those things simultaneously. Um, secondly, and you heard this in many of the keynotes this morning in terms of the power, the cooling that goes with that associated power. I think Forrest mentioned, you know, 1600 watt um, GPUs in the future. Um, it's going to continue to challenge and it's going to continue to need innovations. A lot was discussed around thermals, but there's a lot around power. How you power these things locally that are incredibly dense and how you cool those things that have to power the end devices. There's a lot of engineering that has to go in as these things continue to progress. Design for deployment. Um, this is something I think that gets overlooked a lot of times. Um, it's easy to put one rack together. Try putting 10,000 racks together that all need to be interconnected. It's a very different design optimization point in terms of informing what your rack needs to be. Um, how to deploy it successfully, how to be able to test it successfully, how to ramp that capacity and keep it reliable. I think we talk a lot about, well, how do we design for serviceability? I want to design so it doesn't need to be serviced. Because when I've got acres and acres of data center equipment, I don't have enough people to service all that if things fail. So it's a very different way to think about how you design for it. Um, Partha, who had one of the keynotes this morning, was a co-author on a book that said, the data center is the computer. And in this space, it's absolutely right. This is a highly complex thousand, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands interconnected nodes acting as one computer. Anything goes down in there that isn't resilient, jobs have to restart. And that's no good, and you're tying up a lot of infrastructure from that standpoint. Um, floor and rack level physical blueprints. Like I said, we think a lot about compute and the cooling associated with that and the power, but the interconnects now, absolutely critical. Critical to think about, critical design. The interconnect in terms of what you're doing in the chip have to be co-designed together to create the right failure domain, because things will fail. How can you be resilient to those? How can you minimize the impact when those things do go down? And uh, performance. You know, obviously optimizing for these things um, is absolutely critical. Performance, performance per TCO, optimizing, obviously as a cloud service provider, um, being green, being efficient, absolutely something that's first and foremost in everything we design. But I'll tell you this, the industry is divided on data center layouts. Enterprise, cold, hot aisle service versus CSPs that are optimizing their acreage of their data centers for PUE. Those data centers look very different. They look very different. Um, we have rear thermal plenums where all the service and cold aisle comes in from the front and it drives very different optimizations points. If you look at OCP today and you look at where DCMHS has matured to, it's very enterprise, one rack you centric and optimized. And that's not what the CSP is optimized for. And so kind of a call to action here is for anyone that wants to play in the large language model space, there needs to be CSP centric focus in terms of what's needed for this technology. Because as I said earlier, um, there aren't that many enterprise companies that are placing the POs and they're looking to the CSPs to get access to this technology. Um, and then, you know, some things that are unique for the cloud providers as well. IPUs, DPUs, the, you know, the old SmartNIC category. You know, anyone that's doing a cloud service providing today is offloading as much of the software infrastructure as they can so they can isolate from their internal networks and so they can maximize the capability for what they're leasing out for their infrastructure as a service. So there has to be capability to support those things. Um, security. 
CSPs, like Google, we take security very seriously. We have very unique needs in terms of what we do that are very different. Infrastructure has to support those needs. Um, storage, what we need from network storage, what we need from local storage to boot. Um, it's very interesting when you've got infrastructure that's being leased out to someone but yet owned by someone else and you've got multiple domains in there at the same time. Security becomes much, much more important in that domain in isolation. Systems management. When we talk about, you know, how do we manage these many things? How do we keep them up? Um, how do we make them resilient so that they can continue to deliver, especially on these large clusters that are running large jobs? We've talked about liquid cooling. Today, not a ton of standardization in the liquid cooling space. Hope we can get there so that we can get the industry optimizing, you know, liquid cooling options. Um, and I think that was a lot of the talk this morning from, a, from the keynotes as well. But bottom line, we need the industry offerings to accommodate where the technology is going to go and where it's going to be deployed and how it's going to be consumed. And lastly, I've talked a lot about management and uptime. Um, when we think about massive scales and clusters, do we have the right RAS? Is the right RAS there to keep things so it can detect, so it can be resilient to failures? Do we have the right telemetry and monitoring? And this isn't telemetry and monitoring only at the node. It's at the cluster level. It's at the torus level. And do we have the right things in place? Um, and really, we're just scratching the surface here when it comes to industry standardization for the AIML infrastructure. And uh, I think that's why a lot of us are here today. And uh, hopefully you can take you know, the message with you is that a lot of the progress we've made in the general purpose compute and standardizing that, that same focus and energy we need to bring forward in the AIML optimized space. Um, and just you know, where we are at our infancy and accelerator ecosystems, um, OCP has played a great role in this. Um, we've got progress that we've already started and made in the RAS, the firmware, the management side. In the software framework side, OpenXLA is kind of that first step to really abstract so a, a general purpose user can use any type of you know, hardware infrastructure beneath it, but a long ways to go. Long ways to go in standardization of the space to make it available for the masses. But um, stay tuned, participate in uh, the work streams that are going to happen through the rest of the week at OCP. And uh, we're only going to get there if uh, everyone contributes. So lastly, this is really accelerated compute's time of excellence. You know, I started the presentation talking about AI first which we need to change that mentality to think AI first versus general compute first. They're both equally as important. They're both going to grow and continue to grow and be equally critical in, uh, in IT infrastructure going forward. Um, and lastly, it needs to be a very thoughtful architecture. We talk a lot about performance. We talk a lot about power. We maybe don't talk enough about availability and operations. Equally as important. It doesn't make sense if you can only deploy one rack. We've got a lot that has to be brought up, a lot that has to be maintained, and a lot that has to be sustained. And then really that call to action for everyone in the room here is think about what's needed, where it's needed, and how OCP can help. And think about how OCP standards on the software side, on the manageability side, and even in the hardware infrastructure side can provide modularity and standardization for what we need to do in the AI ML space because um, it's growing fast. It's growing rapidly and at Google, um, we want to take advantage of the technology that's out there and the technology that's easiest for us to ingest will be the ones that uh, win our favor. With that, thank you for your time. I appreciate it.